In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Hello and warm welcome to all of you dear brothers and sisters, viewers of Marjayat Horizon. You are with us with our episode of program Marjayat Horizon. Stay tuned, watching news reports and meetings all regarding the grand jurist Ayatollah Sayyid Sadaq Hussaini Shirazi. With the efforts of Al Mustaqbal Strategic Studies Center in the holy city of Karbala, a conference which hosted distinguished religious figures and academics discussed the unique characteristics of Ashura uprising and Imam Hussein reformative movement. In this conference, which was held under the title of Ashura Historical, Political, and Human Reformation, the experts highlighted the reformative aspects of Imam Hussein movement in the individual and social life of people. Let's watch a report about this conference. Ashura Historical, Political and Human Reformation was the title of a conference held by Al Mustakba Center for Strategic Studies. This conference was to discuss the different dimensions of Imam Hussein, revolution and its reformative concepts and teachings in various societies and situations. The uprising of Ashura and the great sacrifice of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, is a reformative movement to the true sense of the word. This great uprising encompasses all social virtues, addressing its message to all people, men, women, the youth, the aged, and even the children. I sincerely believe that in this great movement lays a perfect social system, and we can borrow whatever we want from it. This uprising was a precise embodiment of Prophet Muhammad's words, which gives us a clear set of measurements to oppose oppression, terrorism, and corruption. More than a thousand years have passed since the Ashura uprising, and we still can learn a lot from its components and lessons. This will help us with our fight in corruption and establish a perfect government where its nation feels safe and the wars are conducted to earn God's satisfaction. The participants also discussed the historical backgrounds of Imam Hussein uprising and its common points with our modern world the role of Imam Hussein revolution with politics and modern man, as well as the issue of corruption and suppressors were also addressed by the experts in the conference. Our view towards Ashura event, which happened in 14 centuries ago, should not be affected by the decay of time. From a humanistic view, Imam Hussein reformative movement did not end on the day of Ashura in 61 AH. Whereas it was bloomed since that day, we must know that anytime there are people and ruling groups, there can happen corruption. It is accepted that where there is absolute power, there is corruption, and therefore the need for reformation is felt more than ever. And sometimes this reformation comes at the cost of a revolution. At the time of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, corruption has swamped the Muslim community, and Imam Hussein sacrificed his life for stopping it. And through this glorious uprising, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, established a stand for stability and resistance against all enemies and dangers. And in this way, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, sacrificed all he had. <laughs> The Grand Ayatollah Shirazi has always been emphatic about expanding the call of genuine Islam and the culture of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon him, all across the world. In this way, Ayatollah Shirazi also indicates that the role of Islamic scholars is far bigger. In a meeting with some scholars from the city of Kifl in Iraq, Ayatollah Shirazi repeated the important duty of the Muslim scholars and asked them to be dutiful. With the descent of the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Almighty God revealed his final religion to the mankind. Therefore, Islam offers its universal and enduring message along the history and in all situations. With this perspective, the Muslim scholars have this heavy responsibility to introduce genuine Islamic solutions to the most modern problems the man ever faces. In this respect, the Grand Islamic Authority and Jewish State Allah Shirazi also underscored the high importance of Islamic scholars who specialize in responding to modern demands. Hosting some Islamic scholars from the city of Kafal in Iraq, the Grand Jurist emphasized that Shia scholars and clerics should increase efforts to educate the masses to combat their depravity and brainwashing. Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi also emphasized that on the role of his scholars for introducing the culture of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, and the true Islam. 
Guanza Itullah Shirazi also emphasized on the role of his scholars for introducing the culture of Ahlul Bayt and the true Islam. Moreover, Ayatollah Shirazi highlighted that the scholars should spread the word of Islam and engage in Islamic activism in all countries, helping to establish several Islamic schools and institutions. Taking up this lead will result in the abundance of obstacles and problems in the way. However, the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi stated that it should not stop the Muslim scholars to do their part in fulfilling their responsibility for promoting the culture of Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them. Referring to Holy Quran, the grand jury said that the people face many different problems so that they know how they act in the face of hardships. <laughs> Peace of Allah be upon Imam Hussein, his children and companions. Hello everyone. I want to talk about the loyal companion of Imam Ali, peace be upon him who was called Rashid al-Hajari, may he rest in peace. This companion learned much from Imam Ali, peace be upon him. He set an example in loyalty and pure love for the household of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them, as he stood against the grandest dictator of that period of time. When Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, the dictator, asked him to declare his dissociation to Imam Ali, Shubir did the opposite and declared his love to the Imam. Therefore, ibn Ziyad ordered to cut off his hands and legs and hang him from a tree. Shubair asked people to write down some of the teachings that Imam Ali, peace be upon him, taught him. Moreover, Ibn Ziyad ordered to have his tongue cut off so that he wouldn't say anything against the Umayyad dynasty. As a result, he was martyred and his dead body was later taken home by his friends secretly and buried in the city of Babylon in Iraq. The grave of Rashid is now visited by Muslims from all over the world. Many people ask Almighty God to grant them their wishes for the sake of this great man many of whom got their wishes. We have many activities in this shrine, including providing facilities for the visitors of the grave, holding congregational prayers, and the prayers of the two grand feasts. In addition, we have founded a library to spread the ideology of the Shia Muslims. We also hold commemoration and celebration ceremonies. Peace of Allah be upon Rashid. We have met with the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, who encouraged us to serve this great companion of the Imam and the pilgrims to his grave, not to mention the Muslim community, especially the Shias. I thank the Grand Jurors for his words of wisdom. This is Sayyid Ahmed Hassani, the director of the Shrine of Rashid al Hajari. May he rest in peace. May Allah give patience to all believers over Karbala tragedy. While we were in the holy city of Qom, we had the chance and honor to meet the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Sayyid Sadr Shirazi. During this meeting with the Grand Jurist, we benefited from his enlightening words. One of his recommendations for us 
was to follow the teaching that we have been taught about Ahlul Bayi, peace be upon them. Since we are in the month of Muharram, we need to double our efforts to serve Imam Hussein and his movement. When the grand jurors heard that we are living in the Kifl city, a city which pilgrims pass by to visit the holy shrine of Imam Hussein on Arbain, he suggested to us to host the pilgrims that visit Imam Hussein in the best possible way. The grand jurors recommended us to take the best possible care of the Prophet Delkef holy shrine. Prophet Zelkev has been known in the two previous holy books, Bible and Torah, as Prophet Ezekiel. His name is mentioned in these two books. Not only Christian and Judaism followers respect him, but also so do the Muslims and Islam. There is a famous narration by Imam Ali which the Imam states, people of the world fall in one of these two categories, either they are in the same religion with you, or they are the same with you as human beings. Prophet Ezekiel tombstone is visited all year long by different visitors that come from all over the world. The grand jury suggested to us to do deep research to study about the place's history. As we know, the place's history can be traced all the way back to the time of Prophet Abraham. The Prophet Ezekiel Holy Shrine, besides being a burial place and a tombstone for Prophet Ezekiel, is also a place in which Imam Ali and Imam Hassan, peace be upon them, conducted prayers there. According to some narrations, this place might be the place where Imam Ali, peace be upon him, will start his revolution. In the end, the grand jurist Ayatollah Shirazi prayed for the well-being and the success of all Iraqis and all Muslims. Some of our activities and reports of this place include that during the time of Arabian pilgrimage, we distribute books and pamphlets to the pilgrims. In this Arabian pilgrimage, we are hoping to hold as many Quranic seminary stops throughout the way as possible. The Quranic seminary stations will be held from Basra city all the way to the holy city of Karbala. These seminary tents will hold many activities related to the Holy Quran which include recitation, memorization, and the understanding of the Holy Quran. The latest monthly report of Shia Rights Watch organization highlights the activities of terrorist groups and organized actions of some governments against Shiite Muslims. This report also provides authentic documents to the public, the media, and international human rights organizations. Here we offer you a thorough analysis of this report. Shia Rights Watch is a human rights organization dependent to the Grand Jury Ayatollah Shrazi, which has dedicated all its efforts to protecting the rights of the Shias all around the world. In this regard, this organization releases monthly report of the violation of the Shias' rights around the world. Here's a report by this organization on October. Afghanistan in a terrorist bomb blast in Kabul, one Shiite Afghan was martyred and three others, including a woman, were injured. This incident took place at a Shiite religious gathering in the country's capital with four explosives planted in this gathering. Jordan Jordanian authorities have openly made hate speeches against Shia Islam, claiming that they would not allow Shia doctrine in their country. These remarks come in a sequel with the statement of the Jordanian Ministry of Awqaf, who promised to fight the Shia ideology in this country. Pakistan. According to the officials, at least 10 persons were killed and 23 others were injured in a bus blast in the province of Balochistan, southwest of Pakistan. Moreover, according to the police department spokesman, 16 people were killed and more than 36 were injured in a suicide bomb blast in south of Pakistan. Bahrain. Some sources have disclosed that the authorities of Jaw Central Prison attacked the prisoners of conscience on the day of Ashura, which is a sacred day for the Shia Muslims. Also, the prisoners were brutally beaten up and tortured while they were transferred to the prison cells. Furthermore, the prisoners had to stand facing the wall for hours, they were held on their knees, slapped on the face and were showered with cold water. Bangladesh One person was killed and 80 others were injured in an explosion, targeting the Grand Husseinia in the capital Dhaka at the time that about 20,000 people gathered in this Islamic center to commemorate the memory of Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura. Yemen. Sources dependent to Shia Rice Watch have confirmed that the Saudi-led coalition jets targeted the Shia citizens in a variety of residential areas. According to the international organizations, the random air strikes have resulted in the death of 59 children within the month of May to July. Egypt. The Egyptian Ministry of Awqaf has warned the Shia citizens not to hold any commemoration ceremonies to honor the day of Ashura in Egypt. In a sectarian remark, the ministry ordered the arrest of those who uphold rituals of Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura. 
Moreover, another terrorist group named Asab expressed its intentions of targeting the Shia Muslims in the event of honoring the Husseini rituals on the day of Ashura. The leader of this terrorist group claimed to be monitoring the mosque of Imam Hussein in Cairo and demanded it to be immediately closed. In addition, he claimed that the members of this group will be watching mosques of Lady Zainab, Lady Nafisa, and Malik Asha closely to make sure no Husseini rituals are held. As a result, the Directorate of Cairo Ministry of al Kaf decided to close the mosque of Imam Hussein peace be upon him in the city on the 9th and 10th day of Muharram. Morocco Anti-Shia propagandists have been launched in this country. Extremist groups in Morocco have launched a wide anti-Shia campaign in this country. In this anti-Shia campaign using the media, extremists have attacked the Shia citizens and their beliefs. This is an unprecedented anti-Shia campaign in this country. According to SRW Watchdog, the escalation of anti-Shia sentiment in this country comes in as the result of the Shias around the world are marking the Ashura tragedy. Syria Mortar attacks were carried against the Alpha city. Majority residents of the city are Shias. The terrorist groups have besieged the city for several months. No humanitarian aid can reach the city. People of this city have run out of water, food, and medicine. Despite the UN truce to let humanitarian aid reach the city, the terrorists once again have breached the truce and blocked all the ways. Local medics in home city have stated that at least one person was killed and many others were injured due to a suicide bomber blowing himself and his vehicle in a Shia populated neighborhood of Azahra. Local sources have added that due to this attack, huge damage was caused to the properties near the attack. Nine children from Annabul and Azahra city who were abducted last year by terrorist groups are now set free. But unfortunately, till this moment, mothers of these children have not been released. The mothers of these children are still imprisoned by terrorist groups. Saudi Arabia Local sources have explained that the military forces have attacked the city of Awamiya using more than 20 armored vehicles and this is while a military curtain was imposed on the city. These forces raided a number of homes including a farm. Witnesses heard a loud explosion in the limits of the town and have said that the fumes of the fire were seen above the sky. Activists have stated that these fumes were caused by the military forces using RPGs to raid a farm. Before leaving the town, the military forces burned a number of vehicles. A terrorist man carried out an attack against believers in Al Haidaria Religious Institute in the Sayhat city. After the believers finished prayers and were about to leave the site, a terrorist man approached them and, using a rifle, opened fire on them. This terrorist attack led to the death of five believers, including a woman, and the injury of nine others. Iraq Baghdad's Operations Command Center announced the death and injury of 20 people due to terrorist attacks in Baghdad city on the fourth day of Eid al-Asha. A security source said a car bomb exploded in eastern part of Baghdad in the al ubaidi district. This terrorist attack left one person dead and seven injured. Baghdad is still experiencing several bomb blasts in different areas of the city, leading to the death and injury of many unarmed civilians. <laughs> Young people are often considered to represent the future as they bring new ideas and energy to add to the pool of knowledge that currently exists. This segment of society also acts as the engine of the society which pushes it forward towards progress and prosperity. This is why the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi always spotlights the role of youth in introducing the call of Islam worldwide. Now I invite you to watch a report of some groups of young people meeting with Grand Ayatollah Shirazi at his central office. In all the history, the youth have been the frontiers of all movements and they had the role of history makers both in the good sense and otherwise. Youth are backbone to a nation. They can change the future of the society with the well-being, courageous behaviors and wise attitude. But how this energetic, innovative and inexperienced abundance of force should flow so that it would serve the good and abolish evil? The Grand Jury Saitullah Shirazi spoke the answer to some young religious activists from different parts of the world in his central office in Holy Kom. Ayatollah Shirazi reiterated the great way of young people in the Islamic scriptures and traditions. And then he continued that the youth should have an evaluation of their big role in the society so that they can take up their responsibilities in the best manner. The Grand Religious Authority referred to the big young names in the history of Islam who had indispensable roles in helping the Prophet Muhammad to establish God's words to the people. The Ayatollah Shirazi also pointed out that each single young person is gifted with the power to change the world into a better place and thus they must appreciate this critical period of their lives. 
In a voluntary task, a number of youth and numbers of religious communities took part at a program to clean the streets, ending to the holy shrine of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. This act was designed and organized by Ayatollah Shirazi Public Relations Office in the holy city of Karbala to cooperate with the municipality of Karbala and serve the pilgrims of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. In the name of Allah, the Compassionate and the Merciful, Allah's blessing be upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. Following the orders of the Ministry of Municipalities, with cooperation of civil society organizations, this voluntary job was done in order to clean up the Karbala city. The Qibla street of Imam Hussein was clean and rinsed. This effort and help is to back up the local Karbala municipality. We want our city to be in need as much as possible and to live up to the expectations of pilgrims of this city. We work day and night to make sure this happens. We want to represent this holy city in the best possible way. In the name of Allah, the Compassionate, the Merciful, Allah's blessing be upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. With the help of the office of the Gwanja Ayatollah Shuwazi and with the help of different religious communities, this job was initiated. We have paved the way for youth to take a part in serving their city. The Qibla street of Imam Hussein was washed and cleaned tonight. The Karbala Municipality thanks Office of the Grand Jewish Sayyidullah Shuwazi in Karbala for initiating their task. And it also thanks the religious communities which participated in this program. We hope this job and task to be repeated again throughout the year. Hamid al Tai, Associate Director of Karbala Municipality. <laughs> In the name of Allah, the Compassionate, the Merciful, following the orders of the Grand Jury Sayyidullah Si Sadiq Shirazi, the religious communities in the holy city of Karbala have taken the burden to clean up one of the main streets that lead to Imam Hussein's holy shrine. By this act, we are serving this holy city and the pilgrims that come from all over the world. As we know that our religion highly insists on cleanliness and purity, the lovers of Imam Hussein not only serve him in Husseiniyas, but serve him throughout their lives. And now we're going to watch the most important news all around the world regarding Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi in the next part of our program, News in Brief. Distribution of financial aids among families of martyrs. In cooperation with Rehana Tul Mustafa Foundation, the Shirazi Followers Office in Baghdad held a ceremony where it distributed financial aids among the families of martyrs in the fight against ISIS. In this ceremony, said that Nan al Musa, we expressed condolences to the families of the martyrs and distributed financial aids among them. Shirazi Followers Office is a center dependent to Gwanda Ayatollah Shirazi in Iraq. Director of Baghdad Cultural Islamic Center attends Quranic event in Rabat al-Mustafa Center. With the efforts of Rabat al-Mustafa Center and on the month of Muharram, there was an event named Imam Hussein, the embodiment of Quran, held in Iraq. This event hosted Mr. Ahmad Ufi Asari, Director of Baghdad Cultural and Islamic Center, as well as some religious, cultural and Quranic activists. Baghdad Cultural and Islamic Center is dependent to Grand Ayatollah Shuwazi in Iraq. Top clerics in Holy Karbala Seminary provide a support of Sheikh Nimr. A number of Islamic missionaries and top teachers at Holy Karbala Seminary brought a message and demanded the Saudi government to release the Shia Saudi cleric Sheikh Nimr and Nimr, as well as other conscience prisoners in this country. This message condemned the death sentence of Sheikh Nimr and considered these verdicts as anti-Islamic. In addition, the clerics at Karbala Seminary demanded the Saudi government to respect the religious freedoms of minorities, especially the Shia Muslims in Saudi Arabia. Ayatollah Shuwazi delegate meets high priest of Christian community in Canada. 
Sheikh Saleh Sibabwe, the director of Ayatollah Shirazi Center in Canada and a representative of the Grand Juris held a meeting with Master Claude Gu, the High Priest of Christian Community in Canada. In this meeting, both sides spoke about religious and cultural issues between Muslims and the Christians. More cooperation among these two communities and the need for opposing extremist and tech free ideology were also emphasized. Grand Ayatollah Shirazi office in Holy Kerbala host people, a number of scholars, religious and social figures, and some seminary students as well as pilgrims of Imam Hussein peace be upon him, attended at the office of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi in Holy Kerbala and met with the directors of this office. During these meetings, the guests at Ayatollah Shirazi office in Holy Kerbala listened to the members of this office 